Man, where have I seen this before? Man, I, I just can't, you know, it doesn't click in my head where I remember this from. Oh, yeah, Philadelphia Flyers, 10-game losing streak back earlier in the season in November. Oh, yeah, now we are on a 7-game losing streak after tonight's loss. Oh, boy. Deja vu, am I right? And I already know where this is most likely going to end because I just don't see the Flyers winning any of their upcoming games just because that's how putrid they have been playing. My goodness, and it doesn't get any more frustrating, but before we get into all of that frustration, everyone, welcome back to TTP Sports, and if you are a new viewer to the channel looking for all your latest Philadelphia sports news and recaps and events, this is the place to be, depending on the outcome, great or miserable, depending on that outcome, so yeah, definitely hit that sub button. Also, if you're a current viewer of the channel, I'm grateful for you being here that long and looking to continue that down the road. Also, if you are looking to buy any tickets to any upcoming events, sports, concerts, whatever you know, use the code down below for $20 off your first purchase, the code TTP Sports at SeatGeek right now. So if you're looking to go into any hockey games, any NFL games, the playoffs are just underway today. NBA, baseball, hopefully when that returns, definitely utilize that code, $20 off your first purchase. That basically just takes away the fees, and hey, that $20 can be used for a drink and a food at any event possible because, you know, that's how much they cost these days. So, yeah, definitely use the code TTP Sports now at SeatGeek for $20 off your first purchase. So, getting into the business tonight. The Philadelphia Flyers lose 3-2 to the New York Rangers tonight in Philadelphia. And, you know, seven-game losing streak like I just mentioned. And uh, it's not even the fact I don't think the Flyers played terribly tonight. I don't think this is the worst they have played over this course of the losing streak because I also do think the Rangers didn't play their best game either. But still, at the end of the day, in my opinion, it just doesn't matter because they just find ways to lose games. They do. They led for a good whopping 37 seconds in this game in the third period, and that all cr came crumbling down as the Rangers scored two unanswered goals after that to win this game. Just how it goes. It's how this Flyers season has been. It, it doesn't get any more frustrating than here. It just doesn't. And the matter of the fact to make things even more frustrating, the entire Wells Fargo Center was filled, filled with Rangers fans. And I mean filled. That entire, basically it sounded like Madison Square Garden in there. That's how many Rangers fans were at the game tonight, overpowering the Flyers fans. One, that, does, that showcases how bad the Flyers have been this season. Two, that showcases how the fans just don't care anymore. And hopefully... Hopefully ownership can realize this and do something to fix this fucking thing. Because it's not working. It just isn't. To see the enemy team, one of your rivals, take over your building, that is embarrassing. It is. It showcases how bad you are, how bad you run as an organization, and just how much the Rangers outclass you by a wide margin. A wide, wide margin. And I just, I feel bad for some players on this team. I really just do. Because I can see some positive things from certain players. It just, it, <laughs> I don't know, I feel bad for Carter Hart. Because he kept him in his game. He did. He had some questionable things today, but I, for the most part, I thought he played pretty well. Cam York, he got his first NHL goal. Got to celebrate that for 37 seconds until the Rangers came back and tied it and took the lead. Joel Faraby, even though I wasn't really, uh, I don't think necessarily Faraby played bad today. It just felt like there were some unlucky moments, and it felt like he's having way too many of those situations where either he's fanning on a pass, he's fanning on a shot, the puck just bounces right off of him. I, I don't know. But still, like, the, the wide positives that I take from this team, like, besides, like, the, the typical veterans in Claude Drew and Cam Atkinson, it's basically just Faraby, Hart, and Cam York. Because that's the only positives I see. Like that first line, Giroux, Atkinson, and Farabee, they generated a ton of chances. But also, you got to handle the Oscar Lindblom line with uh, connecting and Lawton also got eight points on the board as well, getting the first goal of the game for the Flyers. But still, I just, there's just something I, I don't know. I, I can't put my finger on it. I can't put my tongue on it. I, I just can't. I don't understand what the... They're just bad. I think that's the, where I'm trying to find, you know, that word. They're just bad a hockey team. I probably said that many times this season. But I keep, like, you know, processing that in my head, how bad this goddamn team is. And it's just unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. Even when the Rangers don't play their best game, that just showcases you how 
that just showcases you when a good team plays sloppy versus a bad team that is playing sloppy. And at the end of the day, that good team is going to win probably, I would say, 95% of that time. And that is exactly what happened tonight. And the refs, very questionable. There were a lot of, you know, missed calls in this game, but I'm not going to blame this game on the refs whatsoever. That was just something that I noticed throughout. And especially when the Flyers were trying to tie up late, Claude Drew obviously got hooked there. The refs, for some reason, didn't want to call it. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Because this game, this team honestly did not deserve the tie this game. They didn't deserve to even get the point to try to force it to overtime. Let alone you had a lead for 37 seconds. And I'm just like, it's still mind blown about that. 37 seconds you had a lead. And it blew up like that. Basically like this entire goddamn season. I think that is the basic summary for this entire goddamn thing. Unbelievable. Really just unbelievable. So going into this game, Rangers fans fill the crowd. You hear that right from puck drop. Flyers take an early penalty. The Rangers go right to work. You get Panarin over the Fox on the points, and then he sends it over to Zabinajad for a one-time blast past Carter Hart, and it's a one nothing Rangers lead. But, you know, would like to see someone get in front of that shot from Zabinajad, try to block it, because, you know, the Rangers were blocking so many shots today, and the Flyers were barely doing any of that. I would like to see my team put the body out there in front of the puck one for the boys there, but, you know, it's not going to happen. Rangers lead one nothing. The Flyers uh, didn't have a shot in this first period, probably for the first half of it. I would say it took them at least until halfway through this first period to get their first shot of the game, which, you know, is a problem in itself and how bad that is, how embarrassing that is. You know, on home ice against one of your rivals, it takes forever to get your first shot of the game halfway through the first period. It's uh, mind-blowing at that point. It really is. But then they found some spark in their game. The first line got a scoring chance. And then the second line, they forced a turnover in the neutral zone. Get a three-on-two rush up the ice. Connecting, handing it over to Lawton. Who then throws it. Oh, Lawton handing it over to the Connecting. Actually, got it mixed up. Connecting throws it on the net to Shesterkin. Rebound comes right to the stick of Oscar Lindblom. Puts it right into the net as he is falling down. And the game is tied up at one. So, hey. You were getting outplayed for the first half. You finally got some, you know, momentum. Then you tied the game. But then it also kind of felt like they died after they scored that goal. You know, like the Flyers do. But still, you go to the intermission. You're tied 1-1. So that's probably the brightest spot as any as I can find. The second period. Pretty boring second period. I wouldn't say not that many chances for both teams. Even though, you know, Carter Hart, he had some stretches where the Rangers were just piling shots on him. But he managed to make those saves. And actually, I think it was during this first period as well, before we get more into the second period. I forget who it was for the Rangers that was breaking up the ice. The Flyers, they pinched, the, the defenseman pitched, of course, I think too much. I think it was Yandel on the ice, and I forget who his partner was. I don't think it was Sealer at the time. I think Sandheim was still stuck on the ice at this point, if I remember. Both of those guys pinch up. The Ranger player, I forget who it is at this point, rushes up the ice with the puck. Yandel actually does make a good play to get back into, you know, get you know make a defensive play there. Somehow, one-handed shot beats Carter Hart, goes off the post, goes off of his back, and then the puck is just dribbling on the crease, joke right to the red line, and Yandel comes back and somehow keeps this puck out from going into the net. So, still 1-1 there in the intermission. So, there you go. Second period, very boring. Not much really happened. It just didn't. In terms of penalties, you know, the Flyers, the, the, the Rangers did get a power play. The Flyers got a power play, and really nothing turned out from there because, you know, the Flyers' power play is kind of hot garbage. They fumble the puck way too much. They don't take enough shots, and they try to look for the perfect pass. But the penalty kill did step up, I would say. In the second period, they did kill off that one Rangers penalty, and that's basically all you can ask for. So nothing really happens in this second period. I don't remember really any dangerous Flyers chances in this second period, but we go to the third. And the Flyers did have some jump in their game. They definitely did. I would say they really outshot the Rangers this period. They were throwing shots off this entire third but you know they lost this game in the third period as well but they get a good shift in the zone you get a good rush from Zach McEwen who drives the net and the Flyers you know they win the board battle for once and they find a way to get the puck to Cam York who shoots the puck when there's like 20 guys in front of you or it's a shirk and and some and he doesn't see it at all he surprises him with this shot and the puck goes in and that becomes Cam York's first NHL goal. Love the celebration from him. So Cam York, who has deserved all the playing time that he has gotten since he's got called up, finally gets rewarded with his first NHL goal. So that is very nice to see there. But like I said, 
didn't last only for 37 seconds because right after that, the Flyers, for some goddamn reason, you know, the connecting line was out there. They got a chance. They turned the puck over. It went the other way, and it eventually ends up in the back of their net as uh, Philip Hedl ties the game up at two. So that, that was just basically a game in the making. Panarin cross cruising it over to Hedl, who manages to tap it in past Carter Hart. So, you know, yeah. Uh, that, but then, you know, Flyers lead gone like that. Annoying. Annoying. Like, seriously, this team can't hold a lead for 37 seconds. Even more than that, not even a minute. Like, come on. Like, basically, every time this team gets a lead, it evaporates like it's nothing. It's, it's embarrassing. That's it's bad. Like, how much you break down after you get the lead. Like, you know, what is momentum? What is momentum at that point? But not that long after either. I would say a little over three minutes, the Rangers control the puck in the Flyers zone. And I knew something bad was going to happen during this entire situation because the Flyers, for some reason, couldn't, you know, clear the zone. They were letting the Rangers set up way too long. You know, you got guys left open wide behind the net. You get, you know, for some reason, Adam Fox is left by himself wide open on the point as he takes this shot with traffic in front, goes off of Chris Kreider in front of the net. That's basically his office at this point. That's why he scored so many goals this season. Gives the Rangers the lead 3-2. to two. So, yeah. So, in the span of, I would say, a little under three and a half minutes, the Flyers took the lead, and then the Rangers took the lead right back in the span of, I would say, a little under three and a half minutes, I would say. So the Flyers scored their goal at 10 minutes and 11 seconds of the third period, and then the Rangers took the lead at 13.30. So that would be, you know, a, like, what, like three minutes and 19 seconds or something like that, if I believe, if I do the math right, hopefully. You know, I haven't mathed in a long time because I haven't been in school in a long time. So give me a little bit of a break right there, but I do think it's three minutes and 19 seconds. I don't know why I'm going into depth on the goddamn time, but you know what I mean, because this goddamn Flyers team is frustrating, so give me a break here, boys. Come on. Ugh, this goddamn team is so frustrating. <laughs> and it's just, there were, like, so many, and it's, oh, man, this one chance, I believe it was, it, this was definitely a chance to tie the game, or it was, I, I forget what moment of the third period this was in. I'm starting to more believe that it was in the beginning of the third period, I think. It was a rush by the Konechny line. It was a little bit of, a, I would say, a 2-1-1 here. And Konechny elected to pass it over to Nick Sealer. When Nick Sealer has a wide open net. Wide open. Should have just one timed it into the net. No, he tries to do a deke to, you know, surprise Shesterkin. And you know what? Nothing happens. He crashes into the goaltender and the net comes off and the puck goes way wide. Dude had like 10 foot wide open of net. Why don't you just shoot it off the goddamn one-timer? Hence, Nick Sealer. <sighs> it just makes me laugh. It really does. And then the Flyers get their various chances to try to tie the game. And, you know, the worst, you know, extra attacker situation I see because the Flyers barely put shots on net. They get themselves cornered. They let the Rangers forecheck them. And that's basically it because that nothing really happened in that scenario because the game ended and the Rangers won by a score of 3-2. to two. So, sorry for that voice crack there. Three stars of the game. Chris Kreider, first star for the Rangers. Cam York, second star for the Flyers. And Adam Fox, third star for the Rangers. Shots on goal in this game. Flyers surprisingly outshot the Rangers 28-27 to because they pounced on shots in that third period but still somehow lost the game. Face-offs, both teams tied at 50%. Rangers go 1-2 for two on the power play while the Flyers go 1-0 one oh for 1. On hits, very physical game. 33 hits to the Rangers, 23 for the Flyers. Block shots, Rangers blocked a ton of shots, 18 to the Flyers, 15. Both teams gave away the puck a lot. That just basically describes how sloppy this game was. And shots on goal for a period. First period, 8 shots to 6 in favor of the Rangers. Second period, 12 shots to 7 in favor of the Rangers. And in the third, 15 shots to 7 in favor of the Flyers. So, 7 losses in a row since starting, basically, I would say, 2022. Well, actually, not since starting 2022, because this losing streak started when you came back from the Christmas break. So, going over those 7 losses in a row. San Jose. Los Angeles, Anaheim, Pittsburgh, San Jose again, Boston, and now the New York Rangers. Seven losses right there. Your game was postponed against Carolina, which probably would have been a loss, so basically you were avoiding an eight-game losing streak at that point. And your upcoming schedule, a back-to-back -back home and home with the New York Islanders on Monday and Tuesday. Originally, that Tuesday game was supposed to be against Detroit, but then the NHL rescheduled that game to play the Islanders. So you got two games against division foes there. 
Another division foe next Thursday at home with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Buffalo next Saturday. Dallas the following Monday. The Islanders again that following Tuesday. And the wrap up them up with the Kings. D does this team lose another 10 straight? Possibly. Possibly. I don't care how bad the Islanders are. The Flyers are just as bad. They are. I don't even think the Islanders are as bad as they're showcasing, but, you know, I think they're better than the Flyers, but, you know, Flyers, so I have no idea what the hell's going to happen in that scenario. <laughs> but I can definitely see this team still losing 10 straight, even though the Islanders and the Columbus Blue Jackets aren't good teams of their own. I still think they're better than the Flyers, for and foremost, because in the standings, technically, the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, they're two points ahead of the Flyers, and the Islanders, even though they have seven games in hand, Jesus Christ, they have 28 points on the season. And yeah, the Islanders, like, granted, I think they have a good excuse of being bad this year. They have a lot of injuries, a double, a big COVID situation, and also that weird road trip to start the season. So yeah, I would give them a little bit of a break. I think do think they're better, but I also do think they're missing some type of talent with the Islanders. But this is not an Islanders channel. This is a Philadelphia Flyers channel, folks. Uh, well, not specifically Philadelphia Flyers. This is a Philadelphia sports channel. <sighs> Seven-game losing streak. Again. Unbelievable. And it could probably still get worse. It really can. Because the Flyers' record right now, 13-17-7, four games below 500. we We're only at 37 games played so far this season. We got so many more left. We do. And it, it's not going to get any easier from here. You still got the rest of January. You got the eight. Well, even though there's a lot of break in February, who knows how many more games are going to get rescheduled there. The entire month of March, you got the entire month of April. Ugh, this is not going to be fun. It really isn't. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it's just going to get more miserable as the days goes on. And I, 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 I'm not looking forward to it. I'm really not. But... <sighs> It is what it is with this goddamn Flyers team. I'm not going to yell at Scream anymore. I just don't have the energy to do it. I just don't. <laughs> so, that's going to do it for this video, everyone. What are your thoughts on this game? What are your thoughts on certain performances? How frustrated you are? Don't forget to leave those comments down in the comment section below. As always, I would like to see them there. Also, don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to check out the panel lines, which I'm a part of. Their links are down in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out the links to Broads Media, the Flyer Up Pod merch website, and also Flyers Nitty Gritty. All that good stuff is down in the description below. Do not forget to check those out. And like I said at the beginning of the video, the most important thing you can do is hit that sub button and also use the code TTP Sports for $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. And I will see you next time.